Welcome friends to another episode of Blossoms in Bourbon. My name is Mark. I'm the owner here at Creative Occasions and it's a pleasure to have you in my workroom. Um, you know, sometimes in life, you cross paths with people and you wonder whether or not you're ever gonna cross paths with those people again. Well, interesting and funny story. This bottle of bourbon that we're opening tonight was recently gifted to me by somebody that I used to work with 25 years ago. And his wife and daughter came in to talk about wedding flowers. So what a cool experience is that. They were familiar with the fact that I enjoy bourbon. So when they came in for their consultation, they brought this great bottle of Breckenridge rum cask finish. As you might know, it is distilled in Breckenridge, Colorado. And uh, we're gonna give it a taste, see what it's about. Bruce, thank you so much, by the way. All right, a little bit lighter color. I don't know if that has anything to do with the fact that it was finished in rum casks or not. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, that is so good. So I gotta tell you, this is actually a high rye mash bill, 38% uh, rye. 56% corn, six malted barley. So I was expecting a lot more heat. Um, it's, oh my goodness, it's smooth. I did read one review that said that this is a great tropical sipping whiskey. So I'm thinking maybe I found my companion for the beach this year. You know, this sounds like this could be a good choice. Maybe it's that rum element, I don't know. Good stuff, Bruce, thank you so much. All right, so for the floral tonight, we're going to work in this clear glass compote. We've done an arrangement in this bowl before and used one of the Holly Chapel pillows as kind of the grid or the network to um, hold the flowers in, the, in place as the mechanic. Tonight, we're using chicken wire because Chris Keaton is about to die if I don't use chicken wire. So Chris Keaton, I've just called you out, buddy. It's chicken wire night and it's for you. So I, gosh, I hope you're watching. Um, this is just going to really be homage to spring. Spring is here. I don't think officially, it's not officially here, is it, Jason? I think we have a couple more days to go before it's officially spring, but um, it's starting to feel like spring. It's starting to look like spring. The daffodils are up. And so I really just wanted to do an arrangement that was about the beauty of spring. So we're going to have spring flowers in it spring colors. I imagine that, and this is the way I say that intentionally, I imagine that it's going to be because you never know how these things are going to turn out exactly. Sometimes in my mind they're completely different from how they end up. But I imagine that this is going to be just a very loose, kind of casual, uh, flowy arrangement with some foliage elements. I've got some miniature green hydrangeas in there right now. I'm putting in some lavender stock. It's already feeling like Easter colors to me. Um, I have some shorter roses that I wanna pop in there just for kind of a base treatment as well so that they're nice and low, but also have some beautiful color down there. Doing a little bit of hypericum as well. So please, if you want to support what we do here, be sure to like and subscribe to the videos. Hit the little bell icon so that you'll be notified when we post new content. And on this one in particular, if you're watching, I'd love to know what it is that you love about spring. Or do you love spring? I love spring, personally. Um, so is there something about spring that's of special significance to you or that you really like? Um, and if so, what is that? Like when I walk out in my yard and the daffodils are blooming, it just makes me happy. They're such happy little flowers, you know? Those pretty yellow faces and just love them. So basically, I'm just cutting these roses kind of short, working through the center to kind of base that mechanic so we don't see a lot of it. I will tell you that I love this sort of buttery yellow color. 
I'm sorry that I don't know the name of this rose, but I love it in this combination of colors. Let's see, what's next? Let's do some of these darker ones. This chicken wire, uh, you may recall when we've used chicken wire before, uh, and I certainly did with this time too. When you're forming the chicken wire at first, you wanna be sure and get a layer of chicken wire underneath as well as on the top so that that grid that's formed underneath when you squish the chicken wire together is actually gonna hold the stems in place. So the stem goes through the top and then at the bottom, it's also held in place there. So that's kind of an important element about the whole, the whole thing with chicken wire. Put a little greenery in there. Laura was helping me prep today. Thank you, Laura, for gathering all the flowers up. I appreciate that so much. That's actually kind of fun. It's like, you know, on Chopped when they open the basket and they don't know what they're gonna have in there. It's kind of like that when Laura does this. Except if you ask her, she'll tell you that I'm usually saying, oh, I want some of this and I want some of that. So be sure to include it. Okay, are we doing Easter dining room table? It kind of feels that way all of a sudden to me. This is a form of eucalyptus called parvifolia. Some people refer to it as gunny. Um, probably the growers would be able to tell you the difference between the two, and I'm sorry that I cannot, but um, it's great for kind of that flowy element especially if you're doing something that you want to add some linear movement to. This is a great flower for that, or greenery rather. Another beautiful rose. See that little blush down in the center? Gosh, so pretty. I'm gonna tuck him in a little bit lower. Well, I thought I was anyway. There we go. Um, all right, let's get these. Juliet, garden roses in there. Look at how pretty, even that foliage is beautiful on that. So we're just gonna leave that on there. No point in getting rid of that. I'm always surprised by the number of insertions that I can get in an arrangement of this size. And by insertions, that's sort of the same thing as the number of stems. And in this small container, this small, space, it always is surprising to me that you can get this volume in there. This is really so good. It is sort of like there's a fruit element about it. Yeah, definitely. Going to the beach with me this year. That is one thing, honestly, that people I've um, talked to about is that some people don't feel that bourbon is a summer drink. They feel that it's pretty much for the cooler months of the year. That might be another thing you could weigh in on. So give me your opinion on that. Beautiful Gerber. But apparently doesn't want to go in the container. Right, you guys, anybody grow this in their yards? This is called clematis. It's a vine. We'll trail up um, on a trellis or a wall or something. It's got this beautiful kind of uh, bloom that opens that is a sort of a star shape when it completely opens. It's a beautiful for adding movement and kind of opening up an arrangement just like we've done with those two little pieces there. I'm gonna trim this one at this joint to get two more out of this one as well. Wow, that's pretty. It's a great flower. Let's do a little bit of miniature carnation just to kind of pull in some more of the lavender of the stock. All right, so we've got line flowers in here with the stock. We've got form flowers with the roses the Gerbers, 
Um, I would call these little miniature carnations a filler flower. I would also call the clematis a um, filler flower. The hypericum is a filler. And this, this guy. This is called rice flower. And obviously it gets its name from that little, those little beads that are make up the head on it. Again, another really lovely texture. The foliage on the stem is so cool. It's almost herbal looking. Another great way to kind of extend the line. Do want to be sure you get all those little bits of foliage off before it goes in the water. I do want to thank everybody again for the participating in the poll that we did recently and let you know that there's going to be another fun contest actually with a prize um, that you can win coming up soon. So stay tuned for some details on that. And spoiler alert, it involves you designing at home. Not just about helping pick out things for me to design with, but it's also for you to do at home. So it should be fun. Really very good. I did read a review online about this that said it's almost as though the bourbon sucked up all the charred sugar cane from the rum. And so in spite of the fact that it is a high rye uh, mash bill, that that's why it doesn't taste so hot and it is a little bit sweeter on the palate. Um, and that could certainly be the case. This is another form of ranunculus. All right. There are a few places where you can see down into the container. I don't consider that a problem because of the chicken wire. The chicken wire is so fine that it's almost like you're just looking down into the glass bowl with the water. So I don't know if you're able to see that from up above or not, but I, I don't, don't mind it at all. I think that's really pretty and how that turned out. It's really how I imagined, just a loose, beautiful arrangement of spring. So I guess that just about wraps up this episode. I hope you love this beautiful, loose interpretation for spring. I hope that you'll head out and try some Breckenridge. Um, it's a great pour. And until next time, cheers to you and to flowers every day. Thanks for joining.